A TN panel still worth buying in entry-level 1080p gaming monitors? Let's find out. Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're looking at one of BenQ's new entry-level 1080p 144Hz gaming monitors, the Zowie XL2411K. At the start of the year, BenQ refreshed their 1080p lineup with a bunch of these new eSports-focused products, and the XL2411K is the cheapest of the bunch, so it could be a compelling option for those wanting a performance-focused display for competitive gaming. The two key features here are the use of a TN panel and BenQ's DIAC technology, which is their brand name for their backlight strobing tech. Now normally in 2021 you'd say that having a TN panel probably isn't that much of a key feature given the abundance of high quality and affordable IPS monitors on the market, but TNs are still quite popular with competitive gamers due to their pure response time speed. So we'll be benchmarking that today to see whether the XL2411K truly is giving us the TN advantage we'd expect. In terms of design, this display uses what I'd class as quite a practical design. The focus here is on ergonomics. The stand is very adjustable, supporting height, tilt, pivot, and swivel support, with a great range of motion in all of those modes. BenQ have also reduced the footprint of their stand base compared to the prior model, the XL2411P, so it doesn't take up as much desk space. For something with this level of adjustability in the entry-level space, the overall stand assembly is quite sturdy and also supports VESA mounting should you need it. Unfortunately, the design itself is uninspiring from an aesthetic standpoint. The bezels are thick and chunky, which may have some practical benefit to slightly reduce glare from lights at crazy angles, but otherwise looks pretty cheap. There's not a huge amount of gamer style here, which is good as that makes the monitor less distracting to look at, but the overall plastic construction isn't my favourite. The XL2411K has an on-screen display controllable through a directional toggle on the rear, plus several quick access buttons. I quite like BenQ's new OSD layout. It's easy to use and navigate with a simple setup and a quick access menu that pops up first for controlling the most important settings. From a feature standpoint, you get standard stuff like black boosting modes and low blue light filters, but you don't get stuff found on other displays like cheap crosshairs. Now, I know that BenQ monitors are often used in proper competitions, so you wouldn't want a crosshair feature for those uses, but for more casual home use, it might have been nice given that other brands like ASUS do often include them. One of the biggest omissions here, and something I don't quite understand, is the lack of adaptive sync. The XL2411K is not a variable refresh rate display, supporting neither FreeSync nor G-Sync. Now of course, one of the selling points here is backlight strobing through DIAC, which you can't use in conjunction with adaptive sync, so for people already planning to use the monitor at its maximum refresh rate with DIAC, the lack of adaptive sync isn't a big deal. But it's 2021 now, or late 2020 when this display was released. Including adaptive sync on this sort of product should be a requirement and quite a trivial inclusion as there are much cheaper monitors available on the market that do include this feature. It would have made the monitor more versatile. Say you have a gamer that primarily plays CSGO but also wants to dabble in some Cyberpunk 2077. Adaptive sync would be beneficial to that sort of user. Given BenQ has just spent the time refreshing some of their older non-variable refresh displays with variable refresh functionality, I would have thought the XL2411K should also receive that treatment. Generally, I'm of the opinion that regardless of the product segment, new gaming monitors must include adaptive sync variable refresh rate support. It's a non-negotiable inclusion regardless of which gamers are the target audience. If it's a gaming monitor, it should have adaptive sync. While this is a deal breaker, let's push on with testing response times. BenQ includes just three overdrive modes here, and the default mode is off. Fairly uninspiring performance here with an 11.65 millisecond average response time, however there is no inverse ghosting to speak of, as overshoot is practically non-existent in this mode, as you'd expect when overdrive is turned off. Let's turn it up one notch to the high overdrive setting and, ah, uh, well, this isn't ideal. Now we're in the reverse situation of the off mode. Response times have increased massively, now with a sub 3 millisecond average response, which is elite among gaming monitors. However, this has come at the expense of overshoot. More than half of all transitions tested exhibited noticeable inverse ghosting, which is very obvious when gaming and using tests like the UFO test that we'll show soon. Overall, this mode is better than the previous mode as cumulative deviation has reduced, and if you want to know more about cumulative deviation, I'd suggest looking at our video going through our updated test methodology for 2021. However, 
Neither is ideal, and really you'd want something between off and high to deliver a more balanced experience with good response times, but less overshoot. The highest overdrive mode, premium, just pushes things further. We get a small increase to overshoot and a small decrease to response times. This looks similar to the previous mode in practice, if anything a bit worse, and it isn't worth considering. Back to looking at the high mode, and basically this is the best mode for gamers, or at least the best mode that we have on offer, as it's not that great, but there are still a few small positives here. While performance remains roughly the same when testing at 120Hz, the level of overshoot does decrease substantially at 100Hz and lower. As a result, response times are about 1ms slower, but you'll spot less inverse ghosting running the monitor at 100Hz than you will at 144Hz. Of course, this monitor does not have variable refresh rate support, so talking about the best mode for adaptive sync gaming is a bit pointless. These tests only apply if you manually turn down the refresh rate. Compared to other displays, the XL2411K's best greater grade performance at 144Hz is a bit of a mixed bag. While it's the fastest 1080p display we've tested in our new 2021 suite, it also has double the amount of inverse ghosting of the next worst display. So while it technically is faster than a competing product like the AOC 24G2 or even BenQ's own EX2510, it does so with bright trails following moving objects which aren't visible on those alternative displays. When we look at average performance, it's a slightly better story for the XL2411K as it does have notably better performance at lower refresh rates. But this still isn't what I'd call ideal from a TN monitor. I'd want the same level of response times, but without the overshoot, like the HP Omen X27 provides, although that is a much more expensive product. This trade-off between response times and overshoot becomes apparent in our cumulative deviation comparison chart. As a refresher, cumulative deviation measures how close response times get to the ideal instant transition. Slow response times and high overshoot both negatively impact this metric, so it's a great measure of the overall performance balance. And what we find here is that the XL2411K isn't a chart-topping display, it falls more in the range of other monitors. It actually performs worse in this metric than the 2020 refresh of the AOC 24G2, and similarly to the EX2510 which both use IPS panels. It's not a great outcome for a gaming-focused TN monitor, which is supposed to be built for performance, actually performing worse overall than an IPS monitor. The good news is that at lower refresh rates like 60Hz, the XL2411K does provide impressive performance, more around what I'd expect from a TN panel. It's just that at those higher refresh rates like 144Hz, performance regresses a lot with high overshoot. Input latency is good, among the best that I've seen from a 144Hz monitor due to its fast response times and low processing delay. The only way to achieve lower input latency would be to have a higher refresh rate display, something 240Hz for example. Meanwhile, power consumption overall is acceptable, about what you'd expect from a 24-inch display. The most impressive area to the XL2411K's performance is backlight strobing. While in the normal mode you will see noticeable bright trails following behind moving objects when using the high overdrive setting, like you can see here, these trails aren't as visible when DIAC is enabled. BenQ have quite well tuned this setting, all things considered, to get the most out of what this panel can achieve. The end result is a big improvement to motion clarity with lower than average artifacts. This is noticeably better performance than I've experienced with similar 1080p 144Hz IPS displays like the 24G2 and EX2510. Both of these monitors do also support backlight strobing, however there is a more prominent double image from strobe crosstalk on those displays. The XL2411K's image isn't perfect either, but the double image seen here is fainter and harder to spot, a byproduct of its extremely quick initial response time compared to those IPS displays. Unfortunately, there are also drawbacks here. The high level of overshoot does ultimately cause a faint inverse ghost trail in the DIAC mode, which on a better tuned TN display likely wouldn't be there. There is also a brightness reduction, especially when using the premium DIAC setting. And while DIAC is available to be used at 60Hz, it looks horrible in comparison to higher refresh rates, so clearly it's not designed to be used at that refresh. The minimum acceptable performance appears to be 100Hz. For colour performance, the XL2411K is your standard sRGB display, so no wide gamut functionality here. Total sRGB gamut coverage is a little below 100%, but still above 95%, so that isn't too bad. Out of the box factory calibration is a mixed bag. On face value, the results are horrible, especially for grayscale where the CCT average and gamma are miles off being accurate. 
However, I can forgive BenQ a bit here as they specifically say when turning on the display that the default mode is optimized for competitive CSGO gaming. So using a low gamma like this will improve the visibility of enemies in dark areas. To me, this is better than just shipping a monitor with terrible factory calibration as BenQ are doing this on purpose to assist a certain group of gamers. Don't expect anything amazing in the color and saturation test though, as Delta E's are very high here. My problem with this though, is that BenQ don't have any alternative mode available in the monitor that does provide a good level of factory calibration. I could excuse the default mode being suited to competitive shooters if there was like a, a standard mode you could switch it to that returned the monitor to normal, but the other modes found in this monitor, including the standard mode, aren't significantly better than the default mode just shown. And it gets worse because even when tweaking with the color controls found in the OSD, there simply aren't enough options to get the monitor back to an accurate state. These are the settings I settled on, and it includes setting the monitor on the highest possible gamma mode, which isn't enough. The end result is that I can't do better than this through OSD tweaking. Gamma still tops out at 1.9 using the Gamma 5 setting, the best it can do, which is short of a good 2.2 level. This creates all sorts of problems for the rest of its performance. Ultimately, I had to rely on a factory calibrated color profile to do some very heavy lifting to get the display to an accurate state, which does have implications including a less than perfect final result. It's not bad, but really I shouldn't have to do so much work in the calibration stage. My main issue here is that I don't expect all buyers of the XL2411K to only use this display for competitive esports gaming. What if you had someone that was a huge esports fan, but when they stopped playing wanted to watch a YouTube video? Ideally, you'd want to be able to flick over your monitor from the eSports optimized profile to something of a normal profile so that video playback doesn't look extremely washed out. That's not possible with the XL2411K outside of also applying an ICC profile which begins to get messy. Peak brightness is good at 370 nits and I think any lower than this would cause problems for the backlight strobing mode. Minimum brightness of 50 nits is also acceptable. For a TN display, the calibrated contrast ratio honestly isn't too bad. It's a smidgen below 1000 to 1, but in the ballpark of other IPS monitors I've tested and above several other TNs. One thing to note here though is that while I did achieve a 950 to 1 contrast ratio after calibration, in the default mode, contrast was reduced to just 725 to 1, so calibrating this display can deliver a huge contrast ratio improvement and another reason why I'd have loved to see a functional standard profile in addition to the eSports optimized profiles. Viewing angles are terrible, similar to most TN monitors with significant contrast and hue shifts when not viewing the monitor dead on. This makes the XL2411K unsuitable for use as a secondary monitor in my opinion. Uniformity is average, not amazing, not terrible, it, it is what it is. Overall, I went into this review of the BenQ XL2411K somewhat excited to revisit TN displays and see what they could offer to budget gamers, especially those looking for a competitive esports focused product. After all, we should be seeing excellent performance in this class at the expense of color quality, the usual decades-long trade-off from TN LCDs. But what we are actually getting with the XL2411K is a disappointing monitor that's hard to recommend. This isn't a product where it's just not very competitive with monitors around its price. I think there are genuine problems and design oversights here from a technical standpoint. I don't expect perfection from a budget class product, but I do expect better than what is seen here. The biggest strengths of this monitor are also its biggest flaws. The all-in focus on esports gaming, particularly for titles like CSGO, does leave us with a few strong features. The backlight strobing mode is pretty good all things considered, better than alternatives at this price, and the out-of-the-box optimized color profiles for esports titles make sense, making it easier to spot enemies right away. But in this mad scramble to optimize for esports, BenQ forgot that people might actually use the monitor for, well, anything else. The lack of adaptive sync is a huge misstep for a brand new product, this is a requirement for today's gaming monitors, and the lack of a non-esports optimized color profile makes it hard to use for just basic stuff like video playback, and that's not even talking about the usual TN panel flaws like terrible viewing angles and mediocre contrast. Sure, neither of these features may be required in a competition setting where everyone is using a BenQ monitor just for the game and nothing else, but I think home users and more casual buyers would expect a bit more versatility. I guess worst of all though is we really aren't getting the elite response time performance you'd want when buying a TN. Sure, raw response times are impressive, but it's come at the cost of high overshoot and noticeable inverse ghosting. 
only having three overdrive modes doesn't help optimize performance, and ultimately the balance between response times and overshoot ends up worse than IPS monitors in the same product category. Given that IPS monitors do practically everything else better than a TN, TN displays need to deliver better response times than IPS to be a success, and we're just not getting that here. BenQ have then gone and priced this display at $230, US, which is far too high for what we are getting. The AOC 24G2 has been seen for $40 less and is a far better product. I'd still recommend it for 1080p 144Hz buyers, especially with the response time improvements of the new 2020 model. In Australia, where the 24G2 is more readily available, it's $65 cheaper than the XL 2411K, making the BenQ model an even tougher sell. But does this investigation into the XL 2411K mean that all TN monitors are bad and not worth considering? Not at all. Had this display included adaptive sync, a normal color profile, and a few more overdrive modes, it probably would have been a lot better. I would expect the experience to be a lot different even with BenQ's own higher end TN models, like the XL 2546K, which based on what I've seen looks a lot more impressive. So we'll need to get a few other things in to test before we write off TN panels, at least for this year. Anyway, that's it for this review. If you're interested in our monitor testing and supporting it, you can do so via our Patreon and Floatplan accounts. Links to that are in the description below. You'll get access to our ICC profiles, monthly live streams, Discord chat, all the good stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.